So we mentioned the plan of Shaytan, all of his plans entail selling you an insecurity or giving or creating an insecurity and then selling you something that's haram to deal with that insecurity. So let's take, for example, the two specific things that Shaytan actually mentions in his tantrum as he's talking about how he's going to lead us astray. He says two things that seem very awkward. He says that, you know, as a result of me coming to them from in front of them, from behind them, from their right, from their left, what are they going to do? He says, That as a result of my da'wah to them, they are going to uh, cut the ear of a cow or of the cattle. And then I will command them, and they will change the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of a sudden we're hearing about cow's ears and we're hearing about the changing of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that even mean? And why is shaitan bringing these two things up as like these primary things? Because if you're reading these ayat, you're thinking he's going to talk about murder and he's going to talk about adultery and he's going to talk about these types of things. But let's go back to that equation that we mentioned. Shaitan tries to create insecurities. Now these two things, first and foremost, cutting the ear of the cow. What, what's being referred to here is a good luck charm or, you know, superstitions, horoscopes. You know, people wear rabbit, you know, rabbit ears or, or, or you know, some type of, of tooth or whatever it may be, right? Something that belongs to an animal or some sort of good luck charm. Or people actually start to believe that, you know, if this person is at my game and if this person's wearing this color jersey, then we're going to win the game. <laughs> then, you know, everything's going to be okay. People start putting their beliefs in these silly things. And they seem very silly. Fortune cookies, right? Although I don't remember the last time I met someone who actually believed in a fortune cookie. But they must be out there, right? But people start believing in these little things. And they start believing that those things actually can affect their outcome in life, right? Now, what is the insecurity? The insecurity here is the ultimate insecurity that you're not sure that Allah is really in control. That's the ultimate insecurity. You are questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's control and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's authority and Allah's power. Now, what does shaitan do? He tries to make you resort to superstition, good luck charms, right? These, you know, these little things, wear this and it's going to save you. Uh, instead of doing what the Prophet ﷺ said, you see these blue eyes that are hanging on everyone's uh, cars and, you know, not actual blue eyes. No, I don't think anyone actually hangs blue eyes, but those little things that have you know, the blue eye there, and this, this relic is supposed to protect your house from envy and protect it from the evil eye. And if you wear it, then it's going to protect you and so on and so forth. You start resorting to all of these things that are haram. Because you have this insecurity about the, the, the control and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly controls your future and your outcomes. So that's, an, you know, a major insecurity. And the second one, that they will change the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, one of the ways that you can clearly, you know, identify insecurity in a person is when they start to alter themselves. When they start to go through cosmetic surgeries, when they start to, not for any need or necessity, but they start to change the way that they look. And unfortunately, that's something that's praised in the society, right? A person goes under, you know, under the knife for, for 16, 20, 24 hours to change something about themselves, and that's praised, right? But the problem is, is that what we're not addressing is the insecurity. The insecurity, I don't like the way Allah created me. I'm not satisfied with the way that God created me. I'm not confident with what, with what God has given to me. And so shaitan creates the insecurity. Then shaitan says, well, try to change it in an impermissible way. Here's how you can start altering yourself. Here's how you can start changing yourself to look better, right? So you're not pursuing the, you know, you're not pursuing uh, the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're pursuing the sight of people and you're pursuing the sight of people in all of the wrong ways. You're pursuing the sight of people in ways that are degrading to you and degrading to the purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to you. So in both of these situations, insecurity is created and it's a major insecurity that represents something far larger than what meets the eye. And shaitan proposes something that is explicitly prohibited by Allah or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not because these little things, and that's one of the reasons why these little things are mentioned. Because, you know, if I was to see someone bowing to an idol, right, then I would, I would assume certain things about that person as opposed to someone that, you know, just had a good luck charm on their chest. But they could both be committing an act of shirk, right? They could both be committing an act of disbelief. It's not about the size of the idol, Right, if you're worshiping a huge Buddha statue, or if you're worshiping a, a, a teacup, right, that has a picture of a Buddha statue, 
or of, of your favorite, you know, pop star, whatever it is, it's the same thing. It's still shirk. So one of the reasons why shaitan proposes these small things is because these small things represent major things and you're more likely to not take them as seriously. And instead of addressing the insecurity and addressing you know, the, the problem that you have in believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's authority and control and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you so that you could fulfill that. Instead, you resort to these things and that, you know, those things are symptoms of a far greater problem. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us security in the right things and to not let us become insecure in a way that shaitan could feast on our insecurity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video. If you did, then please do share it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing content.